A cantilever brake is a type of bicycle brake in which when the main cable is pulled, a straddle cable pulls the two arms of the brake inwards. Cantilever brakes were predated by center pull brakes, which are objectively trash. There are many different types of cantilever brakes, including the older design of wide profile cantilever brakes, in which the brake arms flare outwards. Riders tended to get their heels caught in those, so design shifted to a more modern style, narrow or low profile cantilever brakes. Some cantilever brakes, such as this one, the Specialized Hard Rock, allow you to change the straddle wire length by means of a bolt. There are many people online who complain about the weakness of cantilever brakes, saying that they have poor geometry. This is untrue, and poor braking performance of cantilevers is probably due to poor brake setup and brake lever choice. Today we'll take a look at the geometry of cantilever brakes and calculate their mechanical advantage. Let's start by doing a calculations on a pair of these wide profile uh, Paul, what is these called, Neo Retro cantilever brakes. Okay, let's get some variables. This is a vertical line. It goes to the center of the bike. This is a horizontal line. It goes between the two uh, brake bosses, between the pivot points of the two uh, arms. This is X. X is our uh, cantilever arm length. This is D. D is half the distance between the brake bosses, or D is the distance between the, the pivot bolt and the center of the bike. This is Y. Now it doesn't matter whether you have a link wire, like this one, or if you have an old fashioned yoke, Y is still yoke height. And we have another variable. This is H. I'm going to just mark it in two places. H is where the, the brake pads contact the rim. So the height between the pivot and the place where the brake pads contact the rim, we're going to call that H. I'm labeling it in two places. Okay, let's get some angles. This is an important angle. Alpha. Alpha is the angle between the vertical and the cantilever arm. If alpha is high, this is a wide profile cantilever. If alpha is low, it's a low profile cantilever. We're going to do our calculations on a wide profile cantilever, but uh, they're same for low profile cantilevers as well. That's our straddle wire. And now we can make a couple of angles off of that. So this horizontal line that I'm drawing is just parallel to our main horizontal, except it goes through the anchor point instead of the pivot bolt. The angle between this new horizontal line and the strad wire is going to be called gamma, while the angle between the strad wire and the cantilever arm we're going to call beta. All right, let's do some force equilibriums now. I'm going to draw these in blue pen. This is the original main force. This is FB, which is the force exerted by your braking wire. FB gets split into two components. FW1 and FW2, which are the forces in each of the sides of the straddle wire. Now we can see FW2 and FW1 are the same. So let's split up FW2 further. So FW2 is broken into two parts, a horizontal component and a vertical component. So this is F vertical and yeah, I'm just going to draw it up here. but. F horizontal. 
we can call it f horizontal too but you can see that if we draw f horizontal f horizontal one for fw1 fh1 and fh2 are the same uh, magnitude in opposite directions and thus cancel each other out so if we can say that fb equals fw1 plus fw2 we can also say that fb equals fv plus f h2 h1 this is for fw1 plus fv plus f h2 this is for fw2 but we can cancel these out because they're the same and fb equals 2 fv now how do we find fv given fw2 easy we use an angle that we had previously in this case we use gamma f v equals f w2 sine gamma we know we have an equilibrium of torque so we can say that the force exerted by the straddle wire and the cantilever arm which is f w2 times x sine of beta is the exact same torque as that exerted by the brake pad onto the rim. So we're going to use FR as the force onto the rim. So FR times H and it's uh, at 90 degrees so sine of 90 is 1. So FR times H. So FR equals FW2 X sine beta over H. Now we know that F W two equals F V over sine gamma, and we know from here that F V equals F B, our original brake line force over two. So, and then we can substitute into the rim. So mechanical advantage is force output, which is the force on both sides of the rim, so that is 2FR over force input sine beta over sine gamma times x over h. Now let's throw in some rough measurements to calculate the mechanical advantage of these Palmier Retro wide profile cantilever brakes. First let's relabel all our variables. Now we're going to rewrite our equation for mechanical advantage. Now I'm just going to measure x, h, gamma and beta based on this picture and write down the values. The mechanical advantage of 1.92. Okay, let's try some different brakes. So we're going to do the same calculations on a pair of low profile average shorty force, but notice two differences. A that gamma is now a much larger fraction of beta and b that h is now much smaller than x. Now let's throw these numbers into the calculator and see what we get. So we get 2.95 which is a higher mechanical advantage than that given by the wide profile cantilevers which is 1.92. If you want your cantilever brakes to stop your bike, you probably want the brake arms to move, which means the geometry changes. Now let's take a look at how the changing geometry as the brake arms move to their range of motion changes the mechanical advantage. Let's, we have this brake lever here. And it fits right over here. This is our pivot. And let's say the brake pad squeezes or wears down as you ride your bike more. Your angles might start looking more like this. Let's calculate the mechanical advantage for this position. 
So we're just going to do the same calculation, but with the smaller h and larger angles gamma and beta. Our mechanical advantage reduces in the low profile brake as we move through the range of action, which means as your brake pads get worn down or as you squeeze your lever harder and your brake pads compress, your mechanical advantage reduces. This is interesting. Now I wonder what, what the change is for our wide wide profile brake caliper. So we have the same same concept here. We got our little arm here. This moves through its range of action. Let's move it by roughly the same angle as we move the low profile. Let's tape it here. So while we measure the height of the wide profile up here, what we're really doing is measuring it where the brake pad strikes the rim. So this is also H. In this case, the corresponding point is a bit lower. It's about here. Now we're gonna just measure the different uh, parts of geometry again. We have a smaller H and larger angles for gamma and beta. We're gonna plug them into our calculator and see what mechanic advantage we get. 2.1. Notice, for the wide profile calipers, moving the brake caliper in increases our mechanical advantage. This is another interesting concept as the more your pads wear down, the greater your mechanical advantage would be. So let's dispel some myths here. Cantilever brakes can be strong whether they're wide profile or low profile. These wide profile cantilever brakes, when set up with the right brake levers, such as big die comp, four fingers, and the right pads, such as cool stop eagle claws that are towed in correctly, can be as strong as modern low profile cantilever brakes, such as the Shimano Altus ones on this Trek 820. If your cantilever brakes don't work correctly, it's probably a result of poor pad choice or incorrect setup, not the fault of the actual cantilever geometry itself. Any cantilever brake, be they low profile, uh, middle profile, or wide profile, should be able to lock up the wheels on command with ease.